Social responsibility and advertising, two terms that may seem contradictory in nature, but not today. We're here with Paul Polozetto, founder and president of CBS Eco Media, and he's going to talk to us about what this division is all about and the difference it's making in communities across America. Paul, welcome. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. It's great to have you here. What you're doing is really, you know, kind of changing media, the, the, whole, the whole world of media and the way it comes to life. How, tell us about Ecomedia and how you got into this. Well, the genesis is that, uh, first of all, I'm not from media. I'm not from advertising. Uh, I am from sort of the public-private partnership space. I've spent right. the last 25 years uh, working with communities to help gap finance projects. Much of my early career was, to, was really around getting projects in the environmental space funded, uh, now increasingly uh, it, projects related to health and education as well. And so my, my origins are really in the public-private partnership space and in working with communities, and it's quite by accident that I find myself in the media space. So tell us how you got into this space. Well, what happened was, in, in, uh, as part of gap financing projects, environmental projects, I started Ecomedia, the, the, the sort of genesis or the origins of Ecomedia started as a nonprofit. And I was looking to raise dollars to gap finance these environmental projects. What do I mean by gap financing is that communities and nonprofits would bring quite a lot of the money together to get a right. project done, but not all of the money. And these projects are sitting on a shelf in need of a little bit of gap financing. And so we, what we wanted to do was fill those gaps, get those projects off the shelf, and into the community. So we started Ecomedia originally as a nonprofit. And wow. what, I, what, what, what I found as a nonprofit um, was that uh, I was taking this shrinking charity pie, this foundation pie, uh, it, particularly during a stressed economy when um, this pie is shrinking. And here we were winning a grant, and a very deserving nonprofit is otherwise not getting a grant. So we're winning a grant, they're, not, they're losing a grant. It's a zero sum game. And so we started to look at that and say, well, Perhaps there's another way. Maybe, maybe there's a way to grow the pie. And that's when I began to look at an ad model to fund nonprofits. Mm -hmm. So at the highest level, Ecomedia is an ad model to fund nonprofits. The nation's most effective nonprofits taking on the most urgent social issues of our time, a better environment, a better health, and better education. So you're really giving a, a voice, giving a, a social conscience to, to media. Yeah, what struck me about that, Rich, was this, that, that there's hundreds of billions of dollars spent advertising right. in the public, and, and it sort of occurred to me that once a 30-second commercial runs, it's sort of yeah. off into the, sort of the ether. Now, I'm not saying that people don't remember these ads right. or they're not effective. It's just that, that there's more there. Right. That, they build a brand, but you're saying this, it could have an ever, everlasting there's effect. There's so much more there. Trapped in ad spends, right. it was my belief, were jobs, <laughs> increased jobs, lower taxes, a better quality of life through a better environment, better health, better education. And when I first started talking about this, people were like, where? <laughs> where are those jobs? I'm like, no, they're right here. They can be harnessed. So, so advertising can be harnessed much like renewable energy. Wow, um, great, and that great it, Yeah, to have a much more uh, meaningful uh, uh, impact and, and I think can resonate with consumers in a profoundly different way. Can you talk about how the actual flow of dollars go because is a client reducing their effective working media budget to fund this? Here, here's really the proposition. I mean, the proposition is, of course, um, that we are going to corporations saying, look, I'm not asking you to spend more money on advertising. What I'm asking you to do is to consider spending more of that money Got it. with CBS. And if you do, will provide you efficient and effective media delivery of your call to action message, whatever that happens to be, getting into showrooms to buy cars or getting into a retail location to do something. And connecting the call to action campaign with outcomes that are consistent with the brand values of that company. So it's not either or, it's and, and. How do we give you efficient and effective media delivery through our amazing unparalleled Got local it. assets and provide you with outcomes that, you, that define your brand DNA. They're, 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 they're corporate social responsibility initiatives you're perhaps already involved in. So sometimes, Rich, what's really cool about this is you won't find too many American companies that aren't doing something pretty cool. 
that once they tell you about the kinds of initiatives they're involved in, you go, whoa, that's super cool. I didn't know you were doing that. And we could supercharge it. And that's right. We could right. do more with it and make it more visible and make it more um, critical to, to the market. Right. So it's sort of like saying, how would you like to do more of what you're already doing with money you're already spending. spending right, and I'm right. like, well, let's say that again. I'm like, no, you're already <laughs> you're already working with the Starlight Foundation. You're already working with uh, Ronald McDonald House. You're already working with kids in need. Why don't we give more money to the Ronald McDonald House or the Fisher House or the Starlight Foundation by, by better leveraging your ad spends? And besides, here's one other sort of efficiency breakdown in my view, and that is, these companies are already involved in these kinds of initiatives. They're quite proud of those initiatives, right, sure. but nobody knows about them. Right. And the reason why nobody knows about them is because they have a finite amount of money to speak to the American public. And with that money, they gotta sell something, right? So we're saying, no, 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 you just carry out your normal call to action campaign. We, Ecomedia, will identify the project and nonprofit, will oversee its implementation, We'll arrange for third-party audit, measurement, and verification of the actual impact of the project. And then we at Ecomedia will produce content, customized content, around how that call to action campaign led to that amazing impact. We'll produce that content and distribute it on CBS. And we will tell that story with third-party beneficiaries basically saying, thank you, YP. Thank you, Cadillac. Thank you, GMC. Thank you, Toyota, a, a list of clients of ours. And, uh, United Healthcare, who's doing remarkable work. So, so it's sort of like saying, we'll tell that story, so that you don't have to compromise the efficiencies Got of it. that Very call smart. to action campaign. Yeah. We started working together closely on a project for YP this year right. that's been you know just right. launched yeah. and it's been tremendous. Yeah. And you know maybe you could talk a little bit about that project and give yeah. you know our viewers a, a tangible example of how you're making a difference and what we're doing with you and what you're doing with us really does, what it brings back to the community. Well, one of the things I think is very interesting about the YP campaign is that the way in which the campaign is working through CBS, right, working through our assets and working through your group, Altitude, is that the, the way in which we're carrying out the campaign, which is the new way to do y, YP, right. it's about doing and, and that the way in which we're carrying out the campaign is in itself what the campaign's all about. You know what I mean? Sometimes the message of the campaign is very clear and succinct, but the distribution of the campaign is altogether different. In this case, the message and the distribution it's a pay, it's a payoff. are aligned. Right. 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 And it's that beautiful. gives it, to me, that gives it authenticity. You know, we carried out something that was amazing. We um, worked with Public Color, which is a nonprofit here in the New York area, and we got involved in painting schools in Manhattan, Queens, uh, the Bronx, uh, and Brooklyn. So the four, four of the boroughs, same day. That's great. It was uh, YP Public Color uh, Day, and Public Color is an incredible organization. And what they're involved in doing is getting young people involved in painting schools. But it's more than that. You know, they come together as teams. Uh, they work together as teams. They take pride in their work. But public color also gets them involved in workshops. These workshops are designed to prepare these kids to go to college. You know, when you see the statistics today about the number of young people that just aren't prepared to go to college, uh, even if they do enter college, they don't finish, they don't graduate. Mm -hmm. How do we get these young people not only getting into college, go to, going to college, but graduating, because we all know that statistics tell us that if they sure. can graduate from college, it'll not only affect their lives, but their children and grandchildren's lives. And then on top of that, getting them career ready, getting them ready for careers. And so that's what co Public Color is involved in, and the, the partnership with YP, it's about doing. These young, these young students are doing, and they're doing something because YP made it possible. Right. Yeah. So what is the success of Ecomedia say about today's consumer? I think it's encouraging. I think the power is changing. And I think it's, I think you bring up a, a really, really interesting point. You say, okay, so these advertisers over here want to have a conversation with these consumers and viewers over here. Right. What's on the minds of these consumers and viewers? Jobs, taxes, mm -hmm. a better quality of life through a better environment, better health, better education. So, okay, so if you advertisers 
every time you speak to these consumers, address in some tangible and measurable way what's on their minds, they'll probably pay attention. If you don't, they'll probably figure out a way to tune you out. And in the most Got granular it. way, advertising is an exchange for time, right? Yes. You can have free comedy, drama, traffic, weather, sports, and music, among other things, in exchange for ads. And so, you know, I look at eco ads and wellness ads and education ads, and I look at the impact they're having. And Rich, if I were to set up a computer full of content, and I sat outside a grocery store at 6 o'clock at night, and everyone's running in to get their groceries, and they're in a hurry, and I, I had a new product I was selling. I said, hey, I, I know you're in a hurry, but if you'll give me 30 seconds of your time, to tell you about the virtues and benefits of my product service, I will show you a hilarious video. Look, I, I really don't have time. How about sure. 30 seconds of your time, I'll give you a sports update and a weather forecast. <laughs> I'll, get them, I'll get them off the internet today. Yeah. I, gotta, I gotta go. How about 30 seconds of your time, and I'll put people back to work in this, in this, in this, in this You community, got me. Right? I'll help chronically and terminally ill kids in children's right, hospitals. Right. I'll feed kids healthier meals in schools. I'll help, I'll help this community deal with its hunger issues. Like, 30, 30, 30, seconds. 30 seconds. We're turning viewers into volunteers. And we wanted awesome. an opportunity where every time a brand said, hey, time out, sorry to interrupt your sporting experience, your, your entertainment experience, but if you'll give me 30 seconds of your time right. okay, to tell you about the virtues and benefits of my product and service, I will improve the quality of your life in your community. And then people go, hey, if that's the deal, yeah. don't be in such a hurry. That's we can talk all day. And I, So, Rich, I think to finish... The point, I think, to your question yeah. about where the power is going. My view in the future is that consumers and viewers will essentially say, you know, and, and you're seeing this with content, right? They're basically consumers are saying, I want my content when I want it, how, how I, I want it, it where I, I want it, right. right? And I'm sitting here thinking, how much longer is it going to take for consumers to say what their terms are for their ads? Hmm. In effect, saying, if you want access to the portal of my mind sure. for the next 30 seconds to tell me about your product or service, here are my terms. My terms are, if you'll provide housing to veterans or help chronically and terminally ill kids in children's hospitals, we can I'll talk all in. day. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I, I got to go. Yeah. So... Let's step back. So you have access to so many not-for-profits. Yeah. How do you decide what not-for-profit to work for? Do you go to them? Do they come to you? Or are you, is, is any not-for-profit fair game? You could go to anyone basically in the country or in a yeah. community and say, let's do a deal. I well, it's sort help. of a combination of things. They come to us. We come to them. You know, we're looking, much like any donor would, you're looking for non-profits that have a track record of really turning the, the most amount of money given back into impact. And so I talked about gap financing earlier, right? I'm looking for projects that need just a little bit of gap financing and that without that advertiser, that project can't wasn't going to happen at all. So we're looking for effective nonprofits that have these gap financing opportunities and a proven track record of execution. Because at the end of the day, we give an advertiser two reports. One is their, their advertising report, you know, who did you reach through CBS app, uh, assets and with what frequency and what were the efficiencies of that campaign. But then again, what was the impact and what was the measurable and verifiable impact of, of how that call to action campaign led to an impact? We, got, we, we want to provide a report. So we want to work with nonprofits that have a tr proven track record and only nonprofits that will report back to us uh, information that's verifiable. I got it. Yeah. And it sounds like a lot of the nonprofits you're working for ha already have been recognized in their community as fulfilling a need that's pretty high on the food chain. Absolutely. It's not something that's just emerging or we're not sure we really want that, but they've already been recognized as yeah. we need this done. Some of them are the really big names that you've heard of, you know, the household names, Ronald McDonald House, the Fisher House, Starlight Foundation. You know, Trust for Public Land, National Fish and Wildlife, th these types of brands, but sure. uh, 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 big nonprofits. But but that's not to say that we're not working with very, very, very small grassroots nonprofits that have been around a long time nice. and have proven themselves very effective. So when they see Paul coming, they're they're pretty happy to take your yeah. call and say, "Come yeah, in." Absolutely. Would you like to send some shout outs to some of your, you know, some clients that have really embraced? Eco media. Well, you brought up one of them, YP. You know that one Love was it. that one was really. I, I look at that as a real success story of alignment between message and execution. Um, you know, GM's been a great client. K 
Cadillac with the work that we're doing with the Starlight Foundation in, in terms of providing iPads in children's hospitals. Uh, GMC and Buick is another GM brand that we're, we're through our education ad providing school supplies and bulk, bulk school supplies and backpacks full of school supplies. Uh, through Chevy, uh, we're providing solar installations on parks, uh, providing uh, parks for kids with special needs. Really nice. Through, uh, yeah. How about through healthcare America companies and um, United consumer healthcare. retail? United Healthcare is United healthcare. an amazing Great. client. Um, we, with United Healthcare, I, there's not a week that goes by where I'm not with them. Uh, in a community. What's really neat about United Healthcare is United Healthcare volunteers come out to the events in in droves, in big numbers. That's great. And we're working together. And I think volunteerism is something that brands can really get behind. Is when you get brands engaging with consumers uh, together around improving communities, I think there's a, a, a bond and there's a relationship that's, great. that's profoundly different. So, great. you know, there's ton of great brands. I don't want to leave any of them out, but you know those are ones that just kind of come to mind. You're so different from the rest of the CBS organization. You know, how do you keep innovation fresh? How do you? Where do you find inspiration? And how do you keep on top of all the things that are going on in the not-for-profit world? Well, I think innovation, you know, exists everywhere, right? Well it said. exists everywhere. I mean, brilliant people are everywhere. Here's where I think it's important in terms of creating a team or a culture where innovation can thrive. Good ideas are virtually everywhere, all day long. But I think the human mind has a tendency to gravitate towards the devil's advocate. And so I'll you know, sort of blow it. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing, right? right. And, 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 and ideas are sort of a fork in the road of an idea. And you'll go in and you'll say, hey, I got this new idea. I can't tell you, Rich, how fast most people's brains go immediately to why it won't work. Yeah. Well, oh, I'll tell you what, yeah, yeah. You know, let me tell you. And you know what I do? I used to go, hold a second. That's a really valid point. That's really interesting. I appreciate that you brought that up. But, but can I ask you a question? And people go, yeah, what? I'm like, what do you actually like about this idea? They're like, oh, um, hmm. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I, I actually really like the way it does this. In fact, it's interesting. If we do this, it could uh, it could actually also. I'm like, good, good. Let, let's, let's let's keep, keep going. going. Let's sure. keep going. And then we go further down the line, and I'll go. Hey, you know what? You, you brought up some points earlier, and I thought they were quite valid. Can we circle back on those? Can we go back to? And they're like, well, you know, now that we've talked about it, I'm not so sure. I was concerned about that. And I'm like, okay, but, but ideas need to live for a while. They need mm -hmm. to incubate. They need to thrive for a while. And I believe good ideas are dying in every office and cubicle and boardroom. And good ideas, really good ideas, are dying today. It's true. Because we have a tendency to gravitate towards the devil's advocate. Right. I think we just need to spend more time down that positive road and right. get good ideas uh, to the market. So true. Positive energy is so much healthier. What are the hurdles that you're faced with when you're going out in bringing this proposition to the marketplace? Well, I think there were a lot more hurdles early on. Just the whole idea that trapped in ad spends were all these positive outcomes, you know? Yeah. Um, and now I, I don't find that to be the case. I mean... So there really is not a downside at all. I don't or think risk, there is. Of course. <laughs> I go to advertisers and go, would you like to buy advertising that's going to improve the quality of people's lives? Or would you like to buy advertising that doesn't? And they go, is that like a serious question? Yeah, is that I'm a like, joke question? <laughs> no, I'm like, no, I'm serious. Well, where, where, where do you see Ecomedia in five years? Well, I'll tell you, you know, there are some new products coming that I'm really, really, really excited about. And we'll have you back you know, in a couple of months I can't wait. to talk about them. But I can't wait. Okay. You know, I, I, I'm, kinda, I'm on a mission, and I, I, I feel like um, we're having real success in the marketplace that uh, – CBS has been a great place for me to, you know, create new ideas, bring new ideas to the marketplace. So I, I really don't think there's too many limitations on our ability to keep growing because when we grow, our ability to have a greater impact on communities uh, grows. And um, that's, a really, that's a really great That's exciting. Yeah. If you had a business card for your life, what would, what would the title be? I'd probably say Inspired Social Advocate. Inspired social advocate. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Thanks. What, what do you want your legacy to be? 
improving the quality of people's lives. It's nice. Pretty powerful statement. I, I know that sounds kind of cliche. I, you well, know, you're I doing know, it. I, I know, I know, but it just sounds cliche, but I'm really serious. I mean, I, I look every week at the projects that we're doing, and, you know, the weeks become months, and the months become quarters and years, and, and there's a body of work that I'm really, 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 really proud of. I would like someone to say, right near the turn of the century, this century, yeah. advertising yeah. started to do something more, something sure. different. It didn't just reach consumers and tell them what to buy or where they could buy it. But, but each time a brand had a conversation with a consumer or viewer, something meaningful happened in the world. And that, to me, would be my legacy. Whether or not people remember me for it or not is not important. What is important is that we're now leveraging advertising to do something that it's never done before. That's great. Yeah. Paul, thank you so much for spending time with us. Your energy is contagious. It is just an honor and a delight to be working with you and have you in this company. Really, thank you for coming here today. Thanks for having me. I really, really appreciate it. It's our pleasure. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. Thanks.